Good morning, my friends. Father Wynn here with my trusty sidekick, my Peruvian coffee cup filled with coffee, and I'm ready to pray morning prayer with you on this Tuesday, the 15th of September, 2020. I'm sitting in the Lich Gate Garden, and you're looking at the Lich Gate at the end of the walkway. A Lich Gate is a traditional uh, English structure. It is a covered entrance to a churchyard, covered because it is the traditional place where the casket is brought in for burial. And it has a little bit of a shelter so that the casket can be placed there when it's brought in from the hearse. If you look at many English churches, you will find lich gates of various sizes or shapes, but generally they are the uh, uh, same image. And in a sense, they represent the entrance into sacred land. I'm very appreciative of this Lichgate Garden, and uh, Bob Renault, who is one of our facilities managers, is a master gardener, and he has really kept this garden in beautiful shape. Today, the church commemorates the Reverend James Chisholm from right here in Tidewater, Virginia. He died on the 15th of September, 1855, James Chisholm was the rector of St. John's Episcopal Church in Portsmouth, just a few miles away and across the Elizabeth River from where I am now. In the early 1850s, a terrible plague of yellow fever struck the city and which ultimately struck and killed him. It was written by a contemporary of the Reverend James Chisholm that by sight you would not have dreamed that this frail body of his held such a lofty spirit, weak and delicate with a degree of modesty that almost amounted to bashfulness, as shrinking and retiring as a young girl Thousands would have passed him in the crowd unconscious that they were in the presence of a ripe scholar and an able divine. His look, a personification of meekness, and to the superficial thinker, he would seem to have been one of those who would quietly have retreated to his solitude far away from the noise and bustle of the pandemic. But the disease came. Chisholm's flock nearly all left, and he too was preparing to spend a portion of his summer in the mountains. But something within him said, stop, don't go. And he stayed. And then it was that this pale, delicate, frail, retiring man came forth to the struggle. And the great, fond, noble soul, which was, after all, the stature of the man, rose in its God-given strength. And he was here at the bedside of suffering and there by the fresh-made grave, here pointing the sinner to the cross of Christ and there carrying food and drink to the needy. Now in the pulpit, seizing upon the circumstances of the visitation to warn others to prepare for death. And then in the hospital, whispering peace to the penitent and departing soul. Death finally came to him, but we remember him today for that great soul that stayed in the midst of that terrible tragedy and continued to minister and care with Christ's compassion for his flock. Let's begin by taking a few quiet breaths to remember the Reverend James Chisholm of Portsmouth, Virginia, 
to carry up into our awareness all that we are and all that we bring into this day and to release it on our out breath into the breath and spirit and hands of our Lord who is there for us as well. And as we release all that we carry, see if you can sink into that quiet place within, a place of peace, of courage, of divine strength that can never be taken away, no matter what the outer circumstances. because it is from the grace of God. And outside is Olney Road, which dead ends at the hospital complex. And I think about all the people who are struggling there, all the health workers who are giving so much of their time and energy and love. An ambulance is going by even as we pray during this pandemic and this time. Let's begin on page 80 with the invitatory. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Continuing on page 82 with the Venite. The earth is the Lord's for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. The psalm reading for today is Psalm 116, found on page 759. 759. Psalm 116, and I'll take my sip of coffee. Page 759, and we're going to read verses 5 through 9 of Psalm 116. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought very low, and he helped me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has treated you well. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. I believed even when I said I have been brought very low. In my distress I said, no one can be trusted. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The reading for this morning is Matthew 24 verses 1 through 8. 
As Jesus came out of the temple and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Then he asked them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I tell you, not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Turning to page 93, let's read together Canticle 18, A Song to the Lamb, page 93, Canticle 18. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne, and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A kingdom of priests doesn't mean a kingdom of ordained people. A priest is one who offers sacrifice, maybe the sacrifice of one's own life for others, to bring God into the midst, to bring God's grace and God's peace and God's hope. In that sense, we carry that call to be a kingdom of priests. And we'll continue on page 97. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, you called your priest James Chisholm to sacrifice his life while working amid great suffering and death. Help us like him to live by the faith we profess, following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ our Lord, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. A Collect for Peace. 
O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life and to serve you as perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a collect for mission. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your Spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our prayers today, we remember especially all health care workers as we watch their cars go by headed to work in the hospital. And we pray especially for Ben Reyna and Rob Blackwood, Beth Corliss, Rebecca Dang, Tom Grant, Glenn Jones, Robin Lee, Sarah McLaughlin, Virginia Marshall, Carolyn Moneymaker, Norwood, Michelle Prescott, Jerry Reason, Bill Reed, Amy Riccio, Patricia Strauss, Ted Tanner, John Taylor, Tim Taylor, Ann Voigt, and Sally Ward. We remember our brothers and sisters who are facing the burning of their homes and communities in California, Washington, and Oregon. We pray, Lord, that you would still the flames, that you would protect them, and that you would help them not to lose heart in the midst of such a trauma. And we pray that you would help all of us find new pathways for addressing our climate change that we're facing. We pray today also for those facing illness, surgery, injury, or adversity, especially Catherine Blackwood, Ann Taylor Cahill, Wilk Chambers, Linda Cherry, Dana Coltrane, Holly Cook, Rick Craig, Sue Cromlin, Charlie Davey, Terry Davis, Roy Dudley, Mary Earhart, Carrie Hughes, Tom Foyt, Dawn Fink, Lauren Henry, David Marty, James Malloy, Ruth Provost, Phyllis Sayers, Francis Smith, Mavis Stapleford, Dawn Tinkler, Priscilla Trinder Rohde, and Heidi Trumbull. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. I hope you all have a beautiful day. It is such a pleasure to be with you in prayer, our prayer in quiet and busy places, our prayer in the solitude and the marketplace. Wherever we are, we can pray, we can breathe deeply, touch that place of peace within that nothing can remove. God bless you all.